saw uh, Carlton Davis kind of working with uh, Bobby on the side there. Can you just kind of update us on uh, maybe something he might be dealing with? Yeah, he just didn't practice today. Got a lot of abdomen. This may be the case. Obviously, Brees uh, is into his 40s now. Uh, Russell Wilson has talked about playing later. Aaron Rodgers. With what Tom has done, um, and you know the quarterback position so well, and all these, these all the experience these guys have, you see this at, at becoming a trend in the NFL where guys will be playing later and later and being successful if they can keep their bodies in shape? Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt, Rick. Um, you know, with sports science, barring major injury, right. I, think, I think these guys can play until they're 45 as long as their arm holds up. And with sports science and all the, the stuff that these guys are doing to stay in shape and keeping their arms strong, uh, I don't see – Unless their legs go, you know. Right. Um, that, but I don't see why they couldn't play until the 45. That position is all about, right, recognition and experience. You've seen everything. So if you if you can match that experience with just a modicum of physical ability, that's the key to the position, right? No, I don't think there's any doubt. I don't think there's any doubt, you know, because they know how to get the ball out of their hands. When you have eight, nine, ten years in, you're not holding that thing very long anyway. But, uh, yeah, for those guys – they they know how to get it out, get it up. As long as they're still accurate and their and their legs are healthy, man, yeah, they're th- that's what you're looking for. Okay, next we're gonna go to Ira Kaufman. Bruce, um, some franchises, some teams, some quarterbacks just seem to excel on on screen passes, and and I think the Packers are one of them. Favre was very good, and you know about Rodgers. Bruce, what kind of challenge is is Todd Bowles facing this week in terms of you know trying to generate a pass rush, and then you got Rodgers so adept. Uh, with these flare passes and screens. Yeah, they do a good job of getting the ball to their backs. And and they've always, like you said, they've always been a good screen team. You know, screens haven't hurt us much this year. Um, we've, we've done a pretty good job. Wide receiver screens, the halfback screens, I mean, that's the vogue in the league. So, But the Packers are really good at it. And, and it's a challenge for you to to rush the passer, discipline, see that back slip out. And Bruce, talk about um, the body language for Rodgers this year. You know, sometimes he looks a little sullen, but this year he's having the time of his life, Bruce, and he, he doesn't have Devontae Adams for a couple of games and nothing seems to change. Yeah, I, he looks very, very happy playing, and uh, it, it looks like the the marriage has, has worked out pretty good from last year to this year. And, uh, and they're, they're having Matt and he have a great relationship and uh, it's showing on the field. Okay, next we're going to go to Gina Lane. Hey, Coach, this Packers secondary held uh, Calvin Ridley to zero catches this past week after having 300-yard games to start the, start the season. Not this past week, sorry, they had a bye week, but this past game. Um, mm-hmm. What is it about this group that, that can make things so challenging for a passing game? Uh, they're, they're solid. You know, they, they mix in man zone, different kinds of zone. Um, they had really open a few times. They just didn't hit him. But uh, mm-hmm. it wasn't like they just man-to-man and shut him down. Uh, they just didn't hit him. Uh, but um, they're a good, solid secondary, good tacklers. And what about Zadarius Smith? Uh, three sacks uh, in the last game against Matt Ryan. What what makes him such a problem for offensive lines? Uh, he's a heck of an outside pass rusher, but they use him inside over the nose a lot too. And uh, he's so quick and strong. Um, heck of a player, great motor. Um, love watching him play. He's a, he's a challenge for us. All right, next to me, Greg Allman. Bruce, just want to ask you about your, your inside linebackers and, and obviously missing Vita on, on Sunday. Just just how much falls to them in terms of them having to be sound uh, and ready for, I, I guess, more blocks they might have to shed to get to uh, to running backs on Sunday? Oh, I don't, I don't think there'll be much different. Nacho's done a heck of a job. They trust him at nose. I don't see there'll be a – I mean, Vita, Vita eats people up just because of his size, but uh, – those two guys, I think they trust what the front's in front of them, and, and they'll just play their normal ball game. Okay, next is Scott Reynolds. Hey, Bruce. Uh, drops are, are an unofficial statistic, uh, but there are a lot of national football stat websites out there that have the Bucks leading the league in drop passes this year. The living legend like Tom Brady throwing your backs, tight ends, and receivers the ball. Are you surprised there hasn't been more accountability among your players in catching more passes? I don't know who the hell makes up these stats. Uh, I don't see us dropping the ball that much. We had a game where we did, but uh, I don't put any stock in it. Our guys can catch, and we don't say shit about it. And then also your your front seven does a great job stopping the run and, and obviously leading the league again in that statistic. But uh, do your, your corners get enough credit for being so good in run support and tackling on, on the perimeter? And, and how important are they to your number one ranked run defense? 
extremely because people try to bounce the ball to corners and uh, most corners in the league like covering people they get paid to cover so it, uh, our guys are extremely good tacklers and uh, you know that's kind of why we drafted them they were tough physical guys that could also have length and cover so they, they fit the defense perfectly. All right, next up is Ed and Cena. You know, Ronald Jones has had a lot of success, you know, getting yards after contact this year. You know, what would you kind of attribute that to? Is it you know, just him being more confident in his running? Is it uh, he's hitting the hole faster? Is it, you know, just you – know, what, what, what would you say is, is just – the reason why, why he's having so much success there? I think he knows the offense. He knows what to expect. He knows the blocking schemes. Um, I think he made Roquan Smith miss dead in the hole twice. Uh, I wouldn't say there was any contact, but he made him miss. Now, he's always had that ability. He's really got much better patience. Uh, he's not running as fast to the hole and uh, seeing things better this year. Uh, like he did near the end of last year. So he's just gotten growing in the offense. And how much for him as, as he continues to develop? I know that, you know, when you get – you're getting some guys healthier. You know, you, you might get Fournette back eventually, Shady, um, and, and, and Keyshawn. I mean, and I know each of these guys have roles, right? But, I mean, how, how much of, of his development is getting those regular kind of, you know, not not 20, 20 carries a game, but, you know, something something in that realm, you know? Yeah, he's a, he's a guy going into the season we knew we could feed 20 to 25 times. You know, then getting Shady, getting Leonard, give him a blow. But uh, – I don't have any trouble. I've had any trouble handing it to him 20, 25 times and, and throwing it to him five or six. So <clears throat> he can handle that load. Okay, next is going to be Kevin O'Donnell. Hey, Bruce, um, do you buy into the belief at all that, that players and teams can have the reputation of committing uh, penalties and, and that it, it seems to kind of just snowball after that? And I ask that because, you know, the Bucks over the last three years uh, lead the league in most penalties. And if you go back 10 years uh, in the top three. So I'm just wondering, do you feel that you, the reputation can kind of lead to more penalties? I don't think a team's reputation, but players' reputations. I think officials come into the game with guys marked, and uh, and if it's close, they call it on them. And I just I look at Demar Dotson last year. He got holding penalties that were not holding penalties because he was a marked guy. And uh, you know, so I, I think the same thing with Ryan Jensen. You know, I think I think he's a marked guy. So with his hustle and effort after he plays to the whistle, and. Um, so, yeah, I think people are marked. I don't know about teams. One thing uh, that you can do to, uh, when it comes to penalties, is it just the personal foul penalties that you really can control more than, than those other holding penalties? Yeah, like I tell you, I mean, poor technique usually leads to holding. You get your feet beat. And then if you're beat, I don't want the quarterback hit, so I don't give a shit if you tackle him. Uh, so I'll take the 15 yards and play from there. I don't want the quarterback hit. But as far as defensive penalties, personal fouls, yes. They got to be eliminated, uh, but uh, pre-snap penalties is the one that bugged me more. Right, we're going to close out with a question from Steve Esbitz. Coach, did you ask the league to review the roughing the passer call on Shaq from Thursday? And if so, did you get any explanation that you can share? No comment, brother. And uh, over the years, have you seen that a player can uh, unmark himself? As far as you know, you mentioned a marked guy. Can a guy sort of work through that, or how, how does that go? Probably takes a year or two, <laughs> but uh, once the officials have it in their mind, they have it in their mind.